Sebastian Gupta, Dr. Basura, and all the my senior colleagues. Today, we would like to discuss a subject which we all have come across, or we have suffered, or uh, we have seen such patients. But I thought, let us uh, give, a, give a thought over it and let's see what are the uh, cause behind the disease and how we can manage all this. Actually, what happened uh, after the rainy season and uh, during the Peri Puja season, during September, October, uh, we came across uh, several number of cases presenting with a dermatitis of bizarre shape at a localized position, on the, mostly on the exposed part, which were oozing and which were oozing and present on the exposed area, presented with stinking, burning and pain. The lesions got crusted over the period of time. So, and there are many patients, about 25-30 patients I have seen within the within a period of two months. And uh, uh, all classes of people, uh, they were, uh, they had presented with such cases, the employees, the uh, children, elder population, male, female, all. So, if the lesion look like this, that you see uh, the shape is redefined, there are certain vesicles, there is oozing spots, and some area there are crusting. Actually, the people they used to present on the uh, third, fourth day, fifth day, some people presented within one or two days. So, the presentation was varied from subject to subject, but mostly it was on the exposed parts. And the, all of them, they have noticed their lesson in the morning after waking up. So, we thought the lesson, the cause of the lesion is during the uh, night time or evening time. And there was excruciating burning pain. So, we thought whether these are, as there are group vesicles with pain, burning, these things. So, we thought it may be a case of whether it may be a case of heartbeat symptoms. Many people they had shown to outside general practitioners, they were given acyclovir also. Or this may be a case of heartbeat joster, then whether there is, we thought whether it's, it is a case of chemical burn, whether this is a case of chemical burn, but as these were seen in the people who were not working <coughs> with the children, school going children, so we thought in this should not be a case of chemical burn. And people didn't give any uh, history of any uh, chemical exposure. Then one thing uh, in the Shalimar Shantaka there are many bacteriums, so we thought whether this is a case of phytodermatitis. But phytodermatitis is uh, present in a more generalized way, so, but these were our differential diagnosis. But the uh, thing is that, uh, it was present in the exposed area mostly affecting face, neck, trunk, upper limb and lower limb. And uh, two or three cases there were uh, involvement of the periorbital area with uh, congenital condition. Uh, uh, later I have come to know by literature study that uh, this is known as a Nairobi eye which is found in the African countries due to the same reason. So, here is a linear lesion, we can see the girl, there is a linear lesion. There is a basically a plaque like thing. Over that there are some vesicles and some vesicles have turned pustules also. Uh, there is a uh, overlying, the uh, lesion is overlying uh, a erythematous base, the erythematous scene. So the uh, clear cut sign of inflammation is there. So the Special points about this lesion was though these were vesicle, uh, casting, erythema, all were present, exfoliation, all were present, but mostly it is a uh, many cases present with a linear pattern. And there were hissing lesions. Uh, whenever the lesion was present in, a, in the elbow, um, uh, in the axilla, uh, in the neck, there is a mirror image of the lesion uh, on the adjacent areas. And there were many cases which present in similar fashion during that period, September, October, November. And uh, especially uh, there is a seasonal outbreak. It 
is another uh, linear solution, uh, and you see there is a inverted space. Over that there is a, a single sum uh, a bigger pasture, and a trail of crusting had started. And this area, you see, this area crusted has all been formed. This area, even the vesicle has not appeared. Only the edema is there. So it is a polymorphic lesion. Now the lesions take uh, seven to ten days to get dry. After drying, there is a crust formation, like a, a scale. The scale, uh, depending on the silicate formation, the scale is either thin or thick. The crust peels off within four weeks' time, and uh, leaving behind a irritatus pink scar. After the uh, pink scar becomes thickened, it gets dried, hyperpigmented in our skin color. And this hyperpigmentation stays there for a long period, stays for at least three months. In some cases, it may persist for five to six months also. There is another lesion. See, uh, this area is affected, and like that, uh, as this is the uh, beard area, uh, this area also got in, uh, involved like a mirror image. When the patient uh, was sleeping, Maybe this area got involved or this area got involved and the at the same time, exactly you put a line here, you see the same mirror image is present on the both sides. Then after uh, the lesion occurred, maybe uh, the cause failed through this, uh, this area, so the maximum involvement is that area, gradually it becomes fade and fade. And the linear pattern shows that the, uh, something has gone through this part. The mineral image is very clearly evident in this picture. This area was involved, similarly this area was involved. This is axilla. And you see that all sorts of missions are present. There is a erythema border, borderline erythema. The crust has formed at the border. This area is <coughs> moist and oozy. And some vesicles are also present. There are certain pinpoint pustules also. So, um, uh, now, um, uh, we have uh, gone through the books and uh, journal reviews and similar picture uh, reveal that this is a case of betel dermatitis. Um, it's caused by a betel, there are many classes of betel, so it is caused by a betel of, uh, called rogue betel, ROB, it is called rogue betel dermatitis. As it presents with mostly blister physical, it is called blister beetle dermatitis. And the genus is pedigas variety, so it is called pedigas dermatitis also. And it is a very <coughs> mostly the present, the present picture is uh, linear, so it is also called dermatitis linearis. All these names are present in the journal search. We search through these names, different papers come and uh, we have seen that it is all these are synonyms or all these are synonyms. The same case, actually, the dermatitis linearis is a uh, it is a broad term. Dermatitis linearis may be epidermal lipase of linear variety. It may be lichen simplex of linear variety. It may be psoriasis of linear variety, uh, like this. It may be uh, that uh, all the linear uh, dermatitis variety is come under the heading of dermatitis linearis, and pedigree dermatitis is one uh, type of dermatitis linearis. Why is it caused by a beetle? It is caused by a beetle. It is caused by a beetle. The insect which is, we all uh, thought it is uh, caused by some insect. But uh, uh, on uh, searching we have uh, come to know the cause. This time actually the number were maximum. About 30 people I have seen within three months, two months.